Opinions on Man of Steel was split down the middle. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I happened to be one that loved it, thinking it was nearly a masterpiece other than a few nitpicks. And it's actually in my top 10 comic book movies of all time. And if you just want to look at action alone, just the action, I think it's the number one, the best comic book movie of all time. But now director Zack Snyder has returned to give us Batman, be Superman, Dawn of Justice. Is it good? Is it great? Is it a dream come true? Well, let's talk about it. I'm Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Now I'll go ahead and get this out of the way when it comes to casting. Cause when they cast Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, I was furious, I was upset, I did not know what to do. I thought they was crazy losing their minds and that this whole franchise would just fall into pieces, saying to myself, why would you choose Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, the Amazonian princess? She cannot act, she is too slim, all you're going off of was her small little appearance in Fast 5 and Fast 6. What is wrong with you? This is crazy. I was so upset thinking this was possibly one of the worst castings in the world. But I saw the film and I have to admit I was wrong. Gal Gadot did a great job as Wonder Woman and I loved it. She was actually, in my opinion, one of the best parts of the film. And I'm not just talking about the character herself, Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot had a few lines of dialogues and I feel that she delivered them to the best of her abilities, which is great. I mean, I am actually looking forward to her solo film now a lot. I really didn't care for it before, but now I'm looking more forward to her solo film than I am David Ayer's Suicide Squad that comes out in August. Yes, I did say that because I love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman in this film. When she popped up on screen and uniform and out, People in the theater were cheering along with myself. She was fierce, she was strong, she looked badass, she looked kinda sexy too, and that's all I want is a strong female character that doesn't suck, which I thought was gonna happen with Gal Gadot, but I was wrong thinking she did a great job. Another casting decision that I wasn't too thrilled with initially was Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, because just from his image alone, he does not look anything like the character that I know. And when that trailer came out with him acting all quirky between Bruce Wayne, Batman, and Henry Cavill, Superman, it just didn't look appealing at all. I'm like, why would you cast him as Lex Luthor? This is just looks horrible. I like Jesse Eisenberg as an actor, but I cannot buy him as Lex Luthor, the ultimate hater of Superman that is a genius level 12 intellect and I just wasn't buying it. But I wasn't completely in love with his portrayal as Lex Luthor, but I did enjoy it and I am looking now forward to what they have in the future with his character. And to be honest, and this is not a spoiler because this was released so much by the director and everyone involved in the film, but this is not Lex Luthor. This is Lex Luthor Jr. or the son of Lex Luthor. So I can't complain if it's not a straight adaptation of a character that is not supposed to be in the first place. Yes, I do want them to pull elements from that father, Lex Luthor Sr., and put it into Jr. And they did that, and I liked it for the most part. But, um, you know, overall, um, I was happy with it. I was not upset like I was going in. They did a great job, and I'm looking forward to what's coming in the future with Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Now, as far as Superman is concerned, Henry Cavill does a great job as Superman. I mean, there's really nothing much to say about him other than great job as Superman. He did a great job in Man of Steel. He did a great job here in BVS versus Superman, but you know, we already have Superman. I wanna talk about people that we haven't had, like Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne, Batman. When he was cast, everybody was pissed off. Now, I wasn't thinking that Ben Affleck is a great actor. If you've seen Argo, if you've seen Changing Lanes, if you've seen The Town, you know that he's a great actor and you know he knows how to put together a film, hence his Oscar win for Best Picture for Argo. He wasn't my first choice. I would have chose somebody else, but I wasn't disappointed. But Batman came through uh, as Ben Affleck. This is the best on-screen Batman that we've seen. He was fierce, he was badass. 
and I like the look of the character. Now, there are some things about the character that I am going to complain about later, and I won't give any spoilers because they just absolutely make no sense to me. But Ben Affleck filling the role as Bruce Wayne, and he's like super duper swole. I mean, my goodness, he did a great job, and I cannot wait for the solo Batman film to come out, hopefully directed by Ben Affleck, because that'll be one of the best pieces of cinematic entertainment in, in history, in my opinion. But Ben Affleck, you did a great job as Batman, and I can't wait to see more, but I will talk about my complaints later on. Jeremy Irons did a great job as Alfred. There wasn't too much with his character, but him bouncing back and forth with Batman, Bruce Wayne, Ben Affleck, I think they did a great job, and I'm looking forward to that too. Now, the biggest sin that this film committed, in my opinion, is the tone and the editing, because I feel that that was all over the place. You have all these plots going on simultaneously trying to come together and sometimes they do come together to create something beautiful and sometimes they don't come together and it's a train wreck and you're just looking at the screen like what that doesn't make sense to me now there are a lot of scenes that can just be taken out of this movie like for example when they show batman's parents getting killed everyone knows that story and it's, it's fine if you want to include it in the film but this time around it didn't do anything to serve the story it just didn't do anything for me and it was just a waste of screen time it was a great scene and a great opening but when i think about it i'm like that just serves no purpose and what came right after that just doesn't make sense but another great scene which is beautiful is when batman is running through metropolis as the Kryptonians are fighting above the city. That was amazing. I love seeing everything from his perspective and everyone else's. It gives you more of the human element and how they're looking at these two gods in the sky destroying their city. We did get a little bit of that at the end of Man of Steel, of course, but it's always nice to see the same thing from a different perspective to paint a picture to why said characters feel the way they do whether they're happy or upset i don't think they did a great job but i don't like the way that scene ended they should have shown to me what happened exactly after that the aftermath like the day the days after the hours after that i wanted to see that but no they jumped forward in time like nearly a year and a half and there could have been so much story of what has been told in that point in time but no they just skipped over that and the film wanted you to assume what was going on and i think they could have did a better job there but then again the editing is all over the place you can have a great scene of something and then it just cuts away and goes to something else you're like no go back that was great i want to see more of that i don't want to see this i want to see that and then it goes there and then comes back and then comes back again and goes there and they kept doing it over and over and it was just clocking you out the film to where you're waiting for something to happen and then you're just sitting there just like okay you know all right all right you know when is something going to happen now man of steel did that throughout the whole film it was an extremely slow burn but i feel that we got an epic payoff at the end with all the action with some of the action even was exhausting but the payoff was not as strong at the end of batman be superman done of justice it was still fun it was still a great job but for such a slow build with choppy uneven editing i want to pay off in the end and when we got there at the end it just didn't give me everything that i wanted i still had fun with it but i didn't get everything that i wanted but that is another thing there are some scenes in this film that just don't make any sense at all they just don't i'm sitting there scratching my head like what is the purpose of that why did you put this in the film it doesn't serve the story it doesn't serve the plot or the characters you're just putting that in just for the hell of it and i, I wasn't buying it at all but something that the film did do a great job is when I was talking about all the scattered plots and how they struggled to come together. And one scene they did at the dinner of Jesse Eisenberg of Lex Luthor, we have Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Jesse Eisenberg. He's like, oh, Bruce Wayne, Miss Clark Kent. Oh, I love to bring people together. Blah, 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 blah. I really did like that scene. They had a lot of great things going on in that scene and things were coming together. And right after that, it cuts to a great scene where Superman is flying all around the world doing all these great feats saving all these people with dialogue and monologue in the background by popular celebrity tv hosts and panelists and journalists and whatnot and it was great and i loved it and they're just showing all the great things of superman and some people are on his side and some people are not on his side and they both have 
great opposing views of why they feel that way. And that is another great thing that the film did is the view of the public and how some people love Superman and how some people are afraid of him and hate him and some people want to embrace him. I thought that was a great job and it showed all the frustration that Superman had to go with. And he's like, what's going on? I mean, I'm saving people, but people are still hating on me. I just don't understand. They did a great job with that. Now, one complaint I do have with Batman is that I think that he was just too brutal in this film. The Batman that I knew and love and grew up with, he has a code of ethics. He doesn't just go around killing people and blowing up people and, and destroying things like that. I mean, he has a code of ethics, but now they seem like they just completely threw that out the window. Now, that can be fine because this is an older Batman and they could say that he's just tired and frustrated and not killing people doesn't get anywhere. But they didn't show us that in the film. They didn't tell us that in the film. They just started having him go around doing whatever the hell he wants with no thought or regard for the consequences. And I just wasn't on board with that. Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne, Batman was great, but they didn't give a reason why he was so brutal and just cranked the knob up to 50, not giving a damn about whatever he does. And I don't want to spoil it here, and I will talk about it later in my spoiler field review, but I think they completely dropped the ball there. And like I said, there are some things in this film that just absolutely don't make sense to me. They just don't make sense. I'm just saying to myself, okay, how did we get from point A to point B? There was no straight line or squiggly line. It just teleported there. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. It doesn't serve the story, the plot, or anything. And But they just want to throw it in the film, and it's just wasting screen time of what you could have used to develop the story more or the characters more. I really don't understand why Lex Luthor is so angry in the first place. I mean, he has somewhat of a valid reason for wanting to go after Batman. But as Superman, no, they really didn't give you a valid reason for that. I mean, did he take all your money? Did he take your woman, your girlfriend, your wife? Did he steal your empire? Did he embarrass you in front of the public? I mean, why are you so obsessed with wanting to bring Superman down? It makes sense in the comics, but it doesn't make sense in this film to me, especially with this not being the Lex Luthor that we know. This is Lex Luthor Jr. So what is your problem? Why is it, what's going on? The film did not explain that. The film did not explain a lot of things. The film just wanted you to assume things that were going on without fully fleshing it out. And I didn't like that. I didn't buy it. Now, possibly the main thing while we're here is seeing Batman and Superman fight, the two biggest titans in comic book history coming together to clash it out. And it was great. I loved the way it was choreographed and all that. It looked amazing, especially in IMAX. And if you get a chance, see this film in IMAX, not in standard ratio. But the way the film portrayed them fighting did not make sense. The only side that made sense to me is why Superman would get engaged in the fight initially. But I love fighting, but I don't want to see two characters, especially two characters that I love to death, fighting for no reason when they could talk it out with five to ten seconds of dialogue. And that could have happened in this film, but they're just fighting for no reason and then stop on the simplest reason. It just... It doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense. And it's not cohesive. I mean, the film is just going on. And then you're like, oh, we're there. Batman and Superman are about to fight. But for what? Come on. Batman is smarter than this. He is supposed to be the greatest detective in the world of all time. And Superman is no dummy either. Use your words. And they did not use their words. They nearly almost possibly could have killed each other by not using their words. It still looked great. And I had fun with it. But... Overall, I'm like, this doesn't make sense and it doesn't add up. But still, after all those complaints, when it all came together in the end, and I still don't want to spoil it for you here, even if you didn't see that trailer number two or three that came out at the end of November last year that spoiled a lot of great stuff that was supposed to come in this film. When it comes together in the end, it was awesome. It was badass, especially when it comes to Wonder Woman. Like I said before, I thought she was the best part of this film. I cannot wait to see her solo movie. And when they came, when it all comes together in the end, I was happy. I was giddy. I was like, yes, this is exactly what I wanted to see. The payoff was not as great as it was at the end of Man of Steel, but I still had fun with it. And I can't wait to see more. But one more complaint that I, I just have to say is the Easter eggs that they tried to throw into the film with the Justice League. That was horrible. It was forced in. It just, my goodness gracious, it was shoehorned and it did not flow at all. I thought it was ridiculous. And I, I actually hated 
that part of the film. And now I'll go into it with more specific details in my spoiler field review, because I'm going to talk about everything. But with this, I was just like, oh my gosh, what, what, what are we, six years old? Come on, treat me like an adult here. And they did not do that. So that was a complaint. But guys, overall, I still have fun with the film. Is the, Did it reach my expectations of being a 9.5 perfect 10 out of 10? No. Did I hate this film? Absolutely not. But did I still have fun with it and think that you should go see it? Absolutely. Yes, it is still a great film and I am looking forward to it. And I cannot wait for the 30 minute R rated extended cut that's going to come out on DVD Blu-ray in the coming months. So if I had to rate this film out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 7 out of 10. The first I saw this Monday and then I saw it last night again on Thursday. The first time I saw it, I gave it a 7.5, but I was thinking about it more and more and more. I was like, no, I have to drop this down to a 6 because a lot of things don't make sense to me. But when I saw it again last night, I enjoyed it a lot more the second time. And I'm going to stick it a 7. So yes, a 7 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. So do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future. And if you would like to find me on any other platforms, you can. You can head over to the website, find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. And guys, share the video. I'm not going to get mad if you share the video. So thank you for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.